Well, good morning. Welcome to vlog number three. Uh, did a little driving around in the countryside last night in Eaton County, and it was great. Good skies, great sunset, found a nice abandoned farmhouse. All the while, wishing it was going to be storming, you know, and <clears throat> it looks like I might get that opportunity today. Now, the weather's forecasting for... I think like about an 80% chance of thunderstorms early evening, about 6 p.m. You know, that's a couple hours before sunset, so the sun will be, you know, a little lower on the horizon and um, should make for some good color, hopefully some good skies. I'm headed up to Grand Rapids to meet up with my girlfriend and we'll probably just start adventuring from that point on. Uh, I'd like to just kind of keep track of the weather. It appears that it's going to be coming from the southeast, so nothing coming uh, uh, inland over Lake Michigan. So that means probably I'll be looking at trying to find some open spaces uh, in northwest Michigan, maybe over more towards central Michigan. Just depends on how the weather tracks. No real plan for today. And sometimes I like it that way best. Sometimes it's nice to just throw your camera gear in the car and take off and see what happens. Alright, so we're backing out from Shelly's place and we are headed south west and it looks like we might get some weather the storms aren't really severe there is some lightning in them there is a band of rain in front of like the more intense parts of the storms so hopefully we can avoid some of that rain but um, fingers crossed I say that a lot in my videos fingers crossed fingers crossed it's not about luck most of the time I don't think I'm mean, sure it's some of it but I mean I have been watching the weather for a few days I have been checking the radar all day since waking up this morning before sunrise and monitoring paying attention plotting planning where I'm gonna go based on what I'm seeing so while I say fingers crossed a lot Maybe doing myself a little bit of disservice and not giving myself credit enough maybe where it's due. There is a lot of work and research that goes into shooting. So enough talking. I need to concentrate on driving. The skies are dark ahead and let's see what we can make happen. Alright, so had a change of plans, was going to drive out into the countryside, decided to maybe try and shoot cityscape or something a little more urban and headed into downtown Grand Rapids and went into the parking garage at the hospital. Uh, one of the benefits of shooting weather like this at a parking garage is that you can go to the rooftop and get a good view, but if it starts raining, which is the case for us literally the minute we got here. Uh, you can stay in one of the lower levels and be protected from the rain. And just now starting to hear thunder, so the weather's getting close. The problem is, is that with all of the rain, it might be a little difficult to see lightning strikes if they are not very close and cloud to ground. So we're going to wander around, see if we can find a good vantage point or view to get the weather as it comes in. I'll check back in shortly. Alright, it's really close now. We've seen a couple of flashes of lightning. There was one just now. I thought I captured one with Pro Capture on the Olympus camera, but what I really captured was the reflection of the lightning bolt on the DeVos Children's Hospital 
that's right back here the big blue building so I'll show you that image here right now and it's funny because I thought I was seeing a bolt of lightning but in all actuality it was actually behind us and I was just capturing the reflection of it so I'm gonna shut the camera off and get back to trying to shoot uh, the wind has picked up quite a bit so the rain is starting to blow in on us um, man <laughs> first legit being out in a storm this year i'm pretty pumped all right kind of pausing the shooting for a minute the wind has picked up really intensely i'll turn the camera around probably going to get covered in covered in raindrops but man alive it is blowing <laughs> that's fun got to keep wiping the camera off here uh, we're kind of sheltering here in the corner for a minute and uh, hopefully hopefully the, the heaviest part of this rain blows by and we'll get lightning on the back side of the storm feel sorry for this guy riding his bicycle down there <laughs> he's going to be soaked when he gets home alright check back in Woo! Ooh, did you hear that uh, I think there's a decent amount of lightning kind of just behind us and kind of above us. I'm hoping that it moves past so that we can get at least a shot at lightning. I think so far the best we've pulled off is maybe a reflection shot in the hospital across the way here. Uh, not using the Sony whatsoever for any of this. I'm excited to use the EM1X and um, I'm getting water drops on the lens. I hate that. So I'm running a live composite. You can do that in the daytime uh, if it's a little darker and you get your settings right. So I'm an ISO 64 and I'm an F22 and my exposure time is one second. And it gives me a pretty decent exposure. And I'll turn the camera around and let you guys see maybe what it's looking like on the back of the camera. But like I said, unfortunately, I'm getting water drops on the front front element of my lens here. And I'm not sure if I brought a lens cloth in this little camera bag or not. Usually I try to make sure that there's one in every bag. Shelly's got one, of course, she's prepared, unlike me. So yeah, we're getting some dust speckles in there. Let's kind of get in here and get that cleaned off. I hate water droplets ruining a lightning photo it drives me nuts unfortunately it's just kind of part of the part of the scenario here thank you sweetheart so we're just gonna hang out for a little longer and see if if this does produce something for us if not maybe this evening later it gets a little bit darker stay tuned all right well that looks like that's a wrap no lightning today that's often the case i don't know how many times i've gone out and not gotten anything probably more often than going out and getting something nah, i'm just going to wrap up this live composite on the em1x and head back home sometimes that's how this works you know it's a lot of chase a lot of excitement and sometimes that's the reward it's not a photograph it's actually just the experience of it all. bust shooting lightning but Shelly looks like she got a ton of cool photos in the parking garage uh, wish I could have gotten my head wrapped around shooting something other than lightning and I might have had a little bit more photos to show so I'll probably just start showing some of Shelly's photos is probably what I need to do those are the only ones that happened today all right well 
Well, it's Sunday. I'm headed back home from Grand Rapids. And yesterday's storm chase was a bust, at least for me. I saw some photos on Facebook. People got some pretty cool cloud structures and a couple of uh, a couple of downbursts, you know, microbursts. And unfortunately for me, it just wasn't the case. But it is beautiful out right now. Blue skies, big fluffy white clouds. So I'm going to take some country roads on the way home and see if I can at least get some sort of landscape shots today. As is my usual driving methodology uh, get off the highway at this next exit or as soon as possible <clears throat> and um, just start taking back roads I know what direction I need to get home so as long as I head in that direction everything is fine and I'm hoping to come across something I've never seen before uh, one room schoolhouse old barn something there are a lot of old one room schoolhouses here in Michigan so, if you drive around randomly enough in the countryside, you're going to stumble upon one at some point. I've had it happen several times before, and that's something I'll be on the lookout for today. I really don't have much else to say. Not all the vlogs will be exciting. Not all the vlogs will be successful. But it's just a way for me to document some of the things that I'm out doing. All right, no old one-room schoolhouses, but I did find this little barn. It's an outbuilding on an old farm, and it's sitting close to the road. And behind it, it's pretty open. There's a big farm off in the distance behind it. But um, I think what I'm going to do, because the clouds are moving pretty quickly, I think I'm going to throw on like a 10-stop ND filter and just get a long exposure with the clouds kind of moving off in the distance uh, it should be pretty cool it's pretty bright so i'm probably going to be shooting i'm going to use the sony camera for this because it's got a really low extended iso so i'm going to drop that iso i think it goes down to 50 so if i'm at iso 50 and i'm at we'll say like f16 uh with a 10 stop nd filter i should be able to run a pretty long exposure and get a lot of movement out of the clouds. So I'll check back in here shortly and see how it's going. All right, so I'm gonna set my camera in manual mode here and turn on my rear display so I can compose this shot. It's actually a really cool tree. Man, I wanna get this tree in the shot. Just don't know if this 17 to 28 it's going to be wide enough to shoot in portrait orientation so maybe we'll give it a shot in landscape and see how it looks much better much better i think this is going to be fabulous it's got to worry about not getting hit by cars She gave me the old stink eye because I was blocking the road. <laughs> Get a lot of funny looks from people when I'm out here shooting. But like I said before, I kind of get it. I mean, I'm somebody that they don't recognize. So I'm just going to do a single bracketed shot just, just because. All right, now I'm going to set my autofocus to manual because once I get this, once I get this ND filter on, I'm not going to be able to see anything at all. So. So I want to lock this focus in nice and sharp. 
just like that. Now I'm going to change from bracketed to a timer. Set a five second timer here. Jump into manual mode. <laughs> I should have gotten out my Nisi Filters app to help me kind of get an idea of how long of an exposure to run. I could jump back over into Aperture Priority and just let it run and see how long that goes for. But I didn't. So let's slip this ND filter in here. We'll run this for, we we'll set it at F13. We'll run this exposure for 20 seconds and see what that looks like. Pretty excited. It's been a while since I've done a long exposure with clouds. So I'm thinking the amount of time that I'm running it for should have a decent amount of movement in the clouds. It's a cute little barn. I can't wait to, to get this picture and share it. Now it's just a waiting game. There we go. All right, so I'll tell you where my settings ended up. Uh, after reviewing my images, I think my favorite shots were um, at ISO 100 f16 and 20 seconds and then i did a series of shots at iso 50 at f16 and i was running for 30 seconds and i just picked up a sony remote so considering maybe uh stopping down further to like f22 and then using bulb mode on the remote to run it past 30 seconds but i really don't know if i'm going to see much difference between you know 30 seconds and you know 45 or 50 that i might be able to run in bulb mode the sun is starting to come out from behind the clouds so i will lose the ability to run much longer than probably what i'm doing now anyways well i didn't have the video running for the owner coming out to see what was going on i was just wrapping up shooting and he came walking out younger guy and uh, really inquisitive as to what I was doing, taking pictures of his barn. You know, he came out pretty upset looking. Um, and I understand, you know, there's some strange person with a camera outside your property taking pictures of your, your property. And you don't know what their intentions are, what they're doing, if they're casing the place for a robbery or what. So it's uh, one of the reasons I have business cards with me all the time funnily enough I think I hand out more business cards to homeowners than I do to fellow photographers or people in the media things like that it's kind of funny but you know he wandered up I say hey, what's going on so I gave him my spiel you know I'm a photographer I like shoot landscapes uh, I have this thing for shooting barns I really enjoy old barns and told him I said I've got business cards here let me give you a card and said well here I can show you what I shot this morning of your barn showed him the back of the camera and I think the card started to um, de-escalate the situation a little bit but when he saw the back of the camera then everything got a lot more cordial he smiled, he said that was really cool. He says, wow, I guess my barn does look pretty cool. I said, yeah, it's an amazing, an amazing building. It's probably got a lot of stories it could tell. And that's just kind of how I see buildings like this. You know, I told him I had a grandfather who owned a big farm and I spent lots of time in the summers out there. And I just have an appreciation for the history and the hard work that goes into a farm. And I think that really, struck a chord with him and uh even in these times of covid uh we got done talking and he reached out and shook my hand and and i was on my merry way and 
he was back into his house probably to finish his coffee. It ended as perfectly as it could. I'm hoping he emails me. I'd be glad to give him a copy of one of the photos that I shot today. Um, you know, he could have been a total jerk and, you know, screamed and yelled, but he uh, at least heard me out. And then I think upon hearing me out, realized not such a bad thing every once in a while to have a photographer stop by. And it's funny because you never know. Uh, my friend Mark Miller, hopefully you're following him. I'll link to him in the description below here. Uh, Mark Miller was out shooting sunset the other night when I was. And Mark messaged me and said, well, I'm done shooting at this location. I just got ran out of here by someone with a gun. <laughs> so farmers have guns. <laughs> Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't want you around their property. And I, I don't go on people's property. Just, just to clarify that. Um, I always stay on the road. And if a property owner approaches me, like was the case the other night when I was shooting Sunset uh, at this other farm near my home, uh, the property owner rolled up in his truck literally five minutes after Mark had told me he got ran off from a location by a farmer with a gun. Uh, this farmer rolled up to me in his truck and uh, asked what I was doing. Same as today, gave him a card, showed him what I was doing, showed him the back of the camera, and, and it was great. You know, he says, well, you know, you can come up, you can come up to the fence, you know, you can, you know, you can get closer if you want, and I took him up on it. So, I think that the best thing you can do in any situation in photography, you know, trust your instincts, uh, try to read the person's attitude and their mannerisms and body language. And in most situations, all it's going to take is a smile and an explanation and show them the back of your camera. And it generally works out pretty good. I'm pretty happy. They put a smile on my face. So I think I'll enjoy the rest of the ride home a little bit lighter hearted and a little bit happier. And I was going to say... Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching my blog posts. I'll talk to you later. But every time I say that, I end up starting this camera back up.